Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. My guest today is Tom Peck. Tom's the Executive Vice President and Chief Information and Digital Officer at Cisco, a food distribution company with nearly $51 billion in annual revenues, 58,000 associates, and serving more than 650,000 customers. He's leading a remarkable business transformation at the company, and I look forward to covering that with him today. He's also one of the deepest technology and digital executives, having served as an executive at companies from Ingram Micro, AECOM, Levi Strauss and Company, MGM, and General Electric. Tom, welcome back to Technovation. It's great to speak with you today. Hey, Peter. Thanks for having me. Always good to uh, spend some time with you and, and share some thoughts. Thank you again. No, the, ple- the pleasure is mine. Well, let's begin with uh, your role. You are the Chief Information and Digital Officer. You've had that uh, combination before, but uh, it always translates a little bit differently company to company. Maybe take a moment, if you would, and talk a bit about your purview at Cisco, please. Sure. Uh, you know, Peter, my, my role, the Chief Information Officer, is your traditional delivery of, of technology, as you might be accustomed to defining it. But the, the combination of Chief Information Digital Officer is is really about driving, accelerating our business transformation. Uh, And it's largely focused on how we use technology and digital capabilities around our customer facing uh, technologies. You know, we're in a food away from home business. So how can technology and digital help bring people process and technology together? Uh, And then clearly I focus a lot of my time on modernization and infrastructure and cybersecurity, but the purview is all things technical uh, and uh, really driving that awesome customer experience that you get from Cisco. That's great. And I I mentioned at the outset that you're in the throes of quite a uh, a business transformation and a lot of it involving technology and digital disciplines. Talk a bit about some of the um, areas that you're focusing on, some of the top line uh, areas of your strategic plan, if you would. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm super excited to be here, Peter. I mean, I can't think of a better place to be at Cisco at this time, you know, today, right now with the, the market recovery. Uh, we're doing some amazing things in our, our transformation. Uh, we recently had um, our investors day. We had our end of year earnings call. We have our strategy. It's called the recipe for growth. The strategy is really designed to help us grow at 1.5 times faster than the industry by the end of fiscal 24. 1.5 times faster than the industry by fiscal 24. Uh, that's an amazing objective for us. And we can't do it without technology and digital capabilities. But we're really focused on five strategic pillars within that recipe. And just very quickly, um, you know, the digital pillar is number one. Uh, that's about all things uh, related to making it easier for customers to do business with us. Think about uh, e-commerce, uh, How do we uh, make it easier for you to transact and and shop with us? And we'll share some more thoughts on that that shortly. But there's a big digital effort. Um, Products and solutions, it's all about making sure that we've got a carefully curated, uh, uh, the the right uh, merchandising and the right product assortment at the right pricing. Uh, Again, heavy on, on technology. The third pillar is about supply chain. It's about the nimble, agile uh, ability to deliver products and services when our customers need it, want it, and how they want to consume it. Uh, The fourth part of that strategy is all about customer teams. It's how we leverage the strength and expertise of our our awesome and diverse sales teams and how we drive that dynamic sales experience. And finally, it's about what we call future horizons, uh, which is about new channels, new segments, new capabilities. It's a future. It's an innovative approach? How do we be more responsible uh, stewards of assets and, and take care of the, uh, the planet we, we all live on as well? And, you know, technology is, uh, you know, all throughout that. And, and it's a great time to be the chief information digital officer as I sit it right at that intersection of all of that. And as you've heard me say before, Peter, we're trying to take the traditional uh, B2B uh, company and, and deliver a lot of these, what I call consumer-like or B2C-like experiences that drive that, that customer intimacy, which will drive that transformation that we're talking about. Well, I, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about, uh, before we get delve even deeper into some of the topics you've already mentioned, you are, as I mentioned at the outset, somebody who has a, an extraordinary depth of experience, and I should say breadth of experience as well, uh, across industries. You've worked in uh, B2C companies, just as you've worked for you know, industrial organizations and other B2B companies as well. And I wonder, you know, some of the threads that you pull through your own experience and how it impacts the way in which you think about things. As you talked about, a lot of um, a lot of what you're focused on and what the company would have you focus on is uh, 
delivering sort of a consumer like experience to a company that that oftentimes deals with with businesses. Uh, t- talk a bit about that, if you would. Some of those threads from across your experiences. Sure. I I, I think um, as we progress into larger and more complex and demanding roles, uh, we we learn from things that have worked in the past. It's the experiences, both good and bad, and. I've been blessed and very fortunate to work for great companies and great brands and great leaders. Uh, a couple just examples, uh, most recently in Ingram Micro, it's a very similar $50 billion plus business to Cisco. It was in the e-commerce uh, electronics uh, consumer uh, uh, computer type distribution business, three-tier supply chain, very similar mandate. It's directly relevant to what we're doing here at, at Cisco. It's all about uh, supply chain, pricing, distribution, merchandising, Directly relevant, and um, you know, looking forward to applying some of the things that we did at Ingram at Cisco and um, building upon those thoughts. And prior to that, at, at AECOM, a, a company that many people don't recognize the brand, but uh, at the time it was a twenty billion dollar leader in architecture, engineering, construction, a, a great big hundred thousand person um, company building critical infrastructure in over one hundred fifty countries, and it really gave me a great understanding and appreciation for uh, complex business models around the globe and and, and working in global jobs with global mandates is is certainly uh, both a a skill and a little bit of an art um, that certainly is is paying dividends in my career. But before that, Peter, as as you alluded to, I've I've got uh, a lot of really good background in uh, in the consumer and the B2C world, uh, working for companies like Levi Strauss and uh, MGM resorts, hotel, casino, gaming, restaurants, and in General Electric, and more specifically, their NBC Universal Entertainment business. So, so um, long story short, building upon my early career in the Marine Corps, where it was all about leadership and taking good care of people, and learning how to focus on the customer in the B two C world, and then bringing some of those experiences and the depth and breadth of people, process, and technology now to the to the B2B world. It's been quite a fascinating ride. I've learned a lot and, and, and again, been blessed with some great opportunities and working with some great people. And you're still relatively early in your journey, the current job, you're still less than a year in role. Um, and I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, I know that you, as you just referenced, the whole notion of a focus on the customer and contemplating customer journeys. Um, talk a little, little bit about the, the methods that you've used there and the, the, the fruit of some of those methods, if you would. Sure. We, we talk about the customer all the time. And it starts at the customer, it ends with the customer. And and as you uh, alluded to, we're in the food away from home business, um, largely anything other than retail groceries. So we view our customers as everything from restaurants. And again, any any type of entity uh, that that consumes food of which people like you and I go to restaurants, you're you're hopefully eating food coming through our, our Cisco distribution channels. But um, you know, I, I've been been in the role for about seven, eight months or so, and um, I, I, I can't emphasize enough the customer, the customer, the customer. Uh, Two thirds of our customers are restaurant owners and operators, and we know for a fact that they want that consumer like experience. Uh, we look at every touch point, whether it's through a, a sales consultant, a customer care center, uh, some of our online tools or e-commerce tools. It's all powered by you know the, the the technology ecosystem, as I call it. And what we're really focused in on, and uh, the the team is doing an amazing do- job. It's it's that truly personalized interaction at every touch point, like I was talking about. It's serving up that carefully curated content, uh, world class product assortment, uh, while also enabling that that self service that that we know as a consumer. Uh, we know that they want to shop and they want great service. We don't want that transactional type of behavior. We want them shopping, uh, and um, uh, what that comes to is 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 with that 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 digital capability that we've been we've been talking about. And if I can just add, just to kind of bring it to life uh, for you, we've we've got our our platform called uh, Cisco Shop, which we're extremely pl- proud of. Um, it's it's the core part of our, our digital strategy is delivering that personalized interaction at every touch point. Uh, we know, like I said, that our restaurant customers want to transact like, like we do as consumers. We know that they buy more products from us online because those digital tools allow us to enable things like, hey, you might have forgotten this product or suggested orders or learning from past pur- purchases and, and really, again, delivering that, that seamless, personalized, intelligent, predictive, next, next best action, consumer-like uh, engagement. And um, 
you know, just another quick thought or two on, on the, you know, the first uh, in, in impressions is, uh, you know, it's all about data, Peter. You know, we, we've talked about this before, my peers and colleagues, both in Cisco and across the world. You know, we know that data is the lifeblood of, of a digital business. We know it drives a more intelligent Cisco as well. Um, our data, like, like most, it sits in a, in a, um, a you know, modern cloud-based infrastructure, and it's, it's really the key to driving everything I just spoke about, that personalized experience, that pricing, and, and all of that, that fulfillment. It's what drives that, that product assortment. It's what drives that, uh, that pricing that we're looking at. And we can't do any of that unless it's on a, um, a modern, world-class, resilient, and secure infrastructure. So we're large, you know, really, really focused on resiliency and, and cybersecurity. So I can't, I mean, Peter, I could talk forever on this, but our recipe for growth is super exciting and uh, we're doing some amazing things. Tom, this has been a, uh, a most unusual period for us all the past year and a half uh, plus uh, that we've been living through the pandemic and all the changes that it has forced. And, and you know, it's it, the, the food and uh, restaurant industry has been incredibly dynamic. It, it, on the one hand, there it, it's a it's a sector generally speaking that was hurt in many ways. Uh, mm-hmm. as so many restaurants uh, had to cut back or close as a result of, of the pandemic. Uh, at the same time, of course, uh, the having a robust supply chain within the food industry was was of the utmost importance. Uh, as as all of us needed to find new ways to to to, to get our get our nourishment, uh, different mm-hmm. perhaps in some ways than in the past. I wonder if you can. I, I realize, of course, you've not been with the company through the entire pandemic. In fact, interestingly enough, you joined in the throes of it, which I'm sure had its own challenges and and interesting facets to it, very different from other onboarding experiences that you've had. But talk a bit about your own perspectives with what you've witnessed. Uh, that, that came before you, but also now what you're helping drive as a leader within the organization in terms of the role that IT has played in, in fostering resilience during tr- trying times? Sure. Hey, Peter, great, great question. Great thought. Uh, you know, our response to, to the pandemic was, uh, was truly amazing from our sales consultants out in the field to the, those who work in the warehouses and everybody around the globe in the, in the company just did an amazing time. And uh, it, it's, it's how we performed in, in the pandemic that really sets us up for success coming out of the pandemic. And, you know, when I look back at, at uh, what we did as a corporation and, and uh, you know, not just the technology and digital teams role, but we as a company, um, a couple of things I'd, I'd love to share with you. Uh, you know, again, back to the theme of the customer, it's all about, you know, supporting our customers every step of the way. Uh, we've done things like eliminating minimal uh, minimum delivery requirements, which was a, a really significant effort to provide the flexibility that our, our customers, again, our restaurateurs uh, needed. Uh, we've offered um, a lot of uh, value-added services, such as uh, faster onboarding for new customers, easy credit card payment and, and uh, uh, structures, uh, free restaurant marketing tools. Uh, we've also spent uh, uh, a lot of time and effort on enhancements to our delivery capabilities and some of our applications, such as estimated time of arrival or ETA tools for like, hey, where's my truck? Where's my delivery? Um, we couldn't have done a lot of these things without the, the strong you know, digital infrastructure and this, this digital first mindset that we, we really have from the top from our, our CEO, Kevin Hurricane, all the way down through the entire organization. Customer digital, it's pervasive in, in the way we think. Um, we've taken onboarding uh, down from uh, days to you know hours. We've done uh, QR codes for our restaurants. One might think that QR codes is not really innovative or progressive, and it's a super simple technology, which it really is. But uh, during the pandemic, it's provided sanitary ways for our restaurants to or- offer menus. Um, it's it's allowed us to provide flexible ways to change menus, especially in the the pandemic where you might have. Uh, some supply chain or product interruptions where you need to uh, make changes very quickly. So the QR code, sanitation, speed, agility, and you know, let me emphasize that one more time. It's all about speed, especially in crisis. Speed wins. In the old days, big companies beat small companies. Today, it's the fast companies who beat the slow companies. So it's all about that uh, that nimbleness and agility. And the pandemic economy was uh, was a, a, a way to to really separate you know the winners and losers and. I would also say the 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 other thing that that we've been doing through the pandemic is uh, really driving a, a, a simplification type of a, a strategy uh, that helps drive uh, a lot of the uh, the resilience that that we're talking about, and um, 
Uh, it allows us to focus on fewer things, uh, more consistent customer experience, more harmonized processes, just better delivery, um, and uh, you know, driving to things like Cisco Shop, our e-commerce platform, it, it, it really helps us um, focus on, on what our customers need and what our customer wants. And, and Peter, I'd be remiss if I, if I didn't add, you know, most of us, um, uh, it's all about uh, leadership. It's about taking care of our people. It's about taking care of our customers. It's about driving that engagement when you're not in the office or not able to show up at, at customer sites as much, uh, staying close to the customers and close to our associates. I can't say um, uh, it, it enough that how proud I am of what we've done as a, as a company and what we've done as a technology organization to, you know, to, to navigate through this complex period and, and, and really continue to, to focus again on those customers. And I know that, as you mentioned earlier, uh, you're anticipating a period of growth now and, and dynamism, uh, finding ways to, to, to further, uh, provide provide new solutions new ways of working with your customers but also thinking about the kind of team that you'd like to be uh, you'd like to lead as well talk about some of your perspectives as you think about some of those changes uh, looking to the future yeah it's you know our our focus now has been uh, again largely on us supporting our customers but as we think about uh, you know going forward and, and how do we continue to further differentiate ourselves uh, and be an even better partner. How can we help our customers with their technology? How do we go inside the restaurants and how do we go inside uh, downstream partners of ours and uh, get better integration of data and integration with point of sale systems and, and things like that? How do we help them innovate, not just help us innovate? So I'm, I'm really excited about some of the changes that uh, allow us to move forward. And um, the other thing that I, I think is you know really important as, as we go forward is um, uh, the diversity of, of our workforce, the diversity of our supply base, the, the diversity of our, our customers. Uh, we are um, um, all in on uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's an, it's important for for so many different angles. Uh, we want to make sure our workforce is representative of the communities in which we work and the customers uh, we serve. We think that the, the diversity of those experiences, those ideas. Um, are, are going to make us a, an even better uh, company. It helps uh, uh, build great technology teams, great business teams, great sales forces. And, and we think the, the convergence of strength coming out of the recovery combined with uh, great momentum, combined with great innovative ideas on, on technology and process, combined with an even more diverse workforce that's representative of society. It, we're just positioned in a great place right now, Peter. That's great, Tom. Thank you for that. I, I want to talk, uh, you mentioned earlier, the future horizon that uh, is one of the pillars that you, you and the team are focused on. As you think about that future horizon, uh, what are some of the things that, uh, that excite you as you look to the future, trends that, 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 uh, that, that excite you or beginning to make their way onto the, to your own personal uh, dashboard or, or roadmap uh, currently, Tom? Yes. Um, when, you, when you think about um, food and food distribution, uh, some people might say, well, well, Tom, how, how innovative can that business become? And I, I like to say, actually, we're a, we're a technology business that happens to deliver food is sometimes how I, how I like to explain it as well. But you'd be shocked, Peter, how, how much technology is, is part of that process. And, you know, when food shows up at your plate, when, when you go out to dinner, the, the, the technology and the process to get it there is, is really quite amazing. And, you know, I like to talk about there's, there's four, Technologies that um, I, I think will further revolutionize our business and, and our, our our sector, if you will. You know, some might say, "Well, well, they're not necessarily new, and they're not, uh, but they they will fundamentally change food distribution." And, and um, let me just quickly kind of walk through those for you. Uh, you know, the first one is analytics and, and artificial intelligence. And you know, like most companies, we're moving away from backwards-looking dashboards and static information to forward-looking predictive running the business by exception, um, understanding and anticipating the needs of our customers before they ask. A quite simple example is uh, next best actions for our sales force so that they know how to better service our customers. We know in advance what product is moving and we can smartly make recommendations better on what the fulfillment and, and uh, other product assortment that they might need. So we're making some, some great strides there. Uh, clearly uh, more to come. Um, the second area, very quickly, is, is blockchain. Uh, blockchain's been around for a while. 
Uh, we typically think about it from a secure ledger and cryptocurrency and things of that nature, which is uh, all good, of course. But for us, uh, it's about the uh, security of our supply chain. It's about food traceability. It's about product recalls. But it's more than that, Peter. We, we are also getting increasingly asked by our customers to provide more insights on the food supply chain. Is it small business, minority-owned business sourced? Uh, where did it come from? Um, you know, is, is it uh, gluten-free? Uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of product attribution and understanding the full traceability of the product is, is a, a, a huge unlock and a differentiating factor as well. Um, the, the, the third area um, I like to talk about is uh, robotics and uh, AR and VR, you know, augmented reality and virtual reality. Um, warehouses, and, and many of you have, have seen warehouses, but, uh, you know, the picking and the packing before it gets on a truck um, is quite intense. And it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of walking around. Uh, it's a lot of hard work. Um, where can we apply automation, robotics to help bring goods to picker or product to the person doing the picking, or, or how can we help that associate uh, find the product better, think augmented reality, or, or even some exoskeleton type um, um, outfits, if you will, that provide uh, health and back support as you're moving around the warehouse. But uh, any time that you can pick and pack faster is, is good for cycle time and good for the customer. Uh, got some really great things going on there. Um, the fourth is um, what I call telematics, which uh, most of your listeners will know as the convergence of uh, vehicular truck and routing types of technologies. Uh, we have a fleet of vehicles that number about 14,000 trucks. Um, it's funny, when I joined Cisco, I started getting texts, people sending me pictures. Hey, I saw one of your trucks in my neighborhood. And, um, you know, we're known for, for, for trucks as well as great product and great customer service. But telematics, you know, how can we smartly enable the digital experience for our drivers and our, our, our delivery associates? Our drivers are often the front face of customer service. And we think there's a lot of upside for um, efficient routing and uh, integration of uh, GPS type technologies. And then I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the fifth um, of the uh, innovative type areas, but uh, you know, not not necessarily new, but it's all about cloud computing and containerized software. Of course, um, that is what gives us the speed, the agility uh, to deliver. You know, the ability to make changes in real time and deliver for our customers in in you know literally sprints or days or weeks, as opposed to months or years of the past. So, you know, food service. Hey, it's 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 pretty cool. It's exciting. There's a lot of technology out there and. And we're getting ahead of the game. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm excited to be part of this team doing some, some really cool, innovative things. That's great. Well, I appreciate you sharing that, that top five uh, trends uh, in your book. I wonder if, uh, if, if you could, as you look ahead uh, and, and contemplate your areas of focus, uh, is there another sort of group of items you might highlight in terms of where, where you and the team will be focusing your attention? Sure. Um, you know, I talked earlier about our, our recipe for growth, and we've got kind of the five pillars, which are which are largely focused on uh, different customer interactions. But if I if I if I answer that a little different, like what are our big initiatives, or what are we really trying to deliver cross functionally globally? Um, a few things come to mind. Um, again, it's that it's that number one is that customer personalization. How do we continue to personalize that customer experience, serving up? Things like smart suggestions based on your order history. Our, our e-commerce platform that we're trying to personalize, uh, again, it's called Shop. It's one of the largest uh, e-commerce platforms uh, in, the, in the country or on the world in the, in the world. $29 billion of annualized sales. Who would have thought that a food distribution company would have a, a, such a large e-commerce site where we're driving that personalized experience? And right now, uh, about 70% of our independent restaurant owners, 70% are using this platform for self-service to do their ordering. That's really amazing if, if you think about it. So anything that we can do to drive that self-service on demand is, is goodness. Um, and uh, the other thing it does is it helps free up time for our sales consultants uh, to be less focused on the transaction per se and more focused on, on the relationship and making sure that we're smartly thinking strategically about how we can better serve those, those customers. Um, the other area that comes to mind is, uh, again, it's about merchandising and pricing. How do we 
further ingest and automate? How do we make sure that our customers are seeing relevant pricing, the entire catalog, high attribution, high definition imaging? How do we make sure we've got the right cogs and cost of goods sold so that we can deliver you know, through that agile supply chain? And uh, we're making some really good progress on making sure that uh, anything you see online uh, gives you that, that great interaction so that it drives those sales that we spoke about earlier. And um, you know, the final thing I, I, I would say, um, well, two things I guess come to mind is uh, this concept of omni-channel delivery. You know, we, we've we've known that term uh, for many many years, and you know, historically it's been being able to get product from either brick and mortar or e-commerce. You know, that's been a, a more traditional use, but but how we use omni-channel within within the Cisco world, you know, it, it's really about exposing inventory to our customers, regardless of where it might be stored or warehoused. And whether you buy it traditional methods through a sales consultant or uh, through an online, uh, we don't want trucks crisscrossing each other on the highway. Uh, we don't want product stockouts or, or um, um, product that might only be available in certain locations, not available to uh, to a customer. So really providing that that great big broad assortment that omni channel delivery and exposing the the, the you know the, the broadest assortment in the industry and and then finally um, I'd be remiss if I if I didn't say um, you know we are you know we, we talked about customer 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 but let's talk about sales associates uh, we have an amazing sales force uh, how do we continue to make their life easier how do we give them the tools the insights we talked about things like next best actions suggested items how do we allow them to spend more time visualization mapping um, as you're driving to a sales call, you know, here are things that you need to follow up on or look into. And oh, by the way, you happen to be driving past a prospect or somebody who may have been a previous customer. So how do we leverage technology for those? So, um, you know, there's, there's, there's just a, a lot of really great things that are, that are going on. And um, um Tech, digital, tech, digital, Peter, it's it's all good. <laughs> well, a lot that we've covered here, Tom. Thank you so much for, for taking time, providing an overview of what you and your, your team are focused on, the very exciting uh, prospects ahead, uh, and, and many of the, the, the innovative things that you're bringing to life uh, for the organization and your customers. It's been a, a great conversation. Great, Peter. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Uh, you're doing some amazing work out there connecting us and sharing uh, thoughts and best practices. Uh, thanks again for having me. I look forward to staying in touch. Thank you. Likewise, Tom. Thank you so much.